Uh, let's start first with Dr. Sumin Chang. Uh, he's going to present a case or two. Uh, Dr. Chang is the Associate Director of the Nuclear Cardiology Laboratory and uh, the CT lab here at Houston Methodist, Associate Professor and, and um, a great colleague over the years. And he's really into multimodality imaging, so level three echo, nuke, as well as CT. Thank you, Dr. Zogby. I have uh, actually pair cases of the same topic. Hope you enjoy it. All right, I have a 64 years old gentleman who had a HARME 2 LVAD due to end stage ischemic cardiomyopathy one year prior to presentation. He has fatigue, short of breath, with some palpitation in his chest, sometimes with changes in position or deep respiration. And physical exam, the JVP was normal, uh, fairly normal sounding LVAD hum and no edema. Creatinine was reasonably uh, uh, okay. LDH is a, a little bit more elevated than uh, the baseline. Uh, the 12D ECG shows a V paste, and the ICD inter uh, interrogation shows increased burden of slow uh, VT. Okay, this is the EKG. As you as I say, probably nature of ablation and uh, V paste, and chest X ray may be slightly. Uh, congested, but really nothing too remarkable. Uh, and the, you can see the shadow of the LVAD with the inflow cannula and alpha graph, alpha cannula, uh, and this is the rotor pump. And uh, obviously, you cannot see the graph because it's, uh, and chest x ray is uh, it's hard to appreciate. All right, so obviously, he got an echo. Um, so, this is the power snow long view. This is some of the up axis X uh, apical view to visualize. You can see the, uh, you can kind of see the tip of the uh, inflow cannula to the apex of the left ventricle. The flow appears to be not too turbulent. And uh, in, in this view, I think the sonographer did a pretty good job to, to show us the more tip of the cannula right here. And, uh, and almost same my apical four to apical two view. Uh, so for now, not, nothing too dramatic. And uh, the Doppler inter interrogation of the inflow cannula show the flow pattern is not perfect, but uh, close to normal. The velocity is definitely not, not high. Uh, I think I'm going to show you better with the contrast. This is the um, mostly apical view of the, the heart. So what would you do next? Uh, nothing. We call EP for VT ablations, call the surgeon to change the LVAD, increase the level of anticoagulation. It could be pump thrombosis. Or you, would you like to need more? Would you like to have more information before you do something? Any vote? Anything. Anything. One other fellow? More information. More more information. information. Yeah. <laughs> Patient is stable, so there's no need to rush. Correct. All right, question what would you do? <laughs> Wait, we have the option. Mohammed. CT, why? Why not TE? I think TE mainly because you don't. You know, you're in esophagus, and uh, for camel, it's in the far field, so you probably, sometimes you can get good pictures, uh, but you definitely uh, probably not going to be able to see the rest of the uh, part of the uh, LVAD. So we did a CT, and this is what we found. Uh, you can see um, the inflow cannula, the myocardial tissue of the infrocetin was stuck into the inflow cannula right here. Okay, so still the question is, uh, is this a permanent thing? This is a, a, you know, on and off things. Uh, so I think the gated CT was very important in this case because if we had only acquired one phase of cardiac cycle, we probably won't be able to have uh, this diagnosis. You can see that during, uh, during diastole, during the suction, uh, the infraceptum, the myocardial tissue gets sucked into uh, the, infra, the tip of inflow cannula, and that could be the reason why sometimes with the position change or, inspir or deep inspiration, uh, because the shift of the septum and the size, you have irritation of the myocardium causing intermittent slow VTAC. Okay. 
just for people who are not used to look at uh, LVAD, CT and LVAD, this should be the normal position of the LVAD, all right, with the tip of the camera pointing toward the inflow. So the, so it's, the blood flow will be going this direction. Uh, so the, the diagnosis is the malposition of LVAD inflow camera associated with suction event and ventricular tachycardia. And the history was um, a month before the speed of the LVAD was increased for optimal unloading because the patient was having heart failure symptom. So they increase uh, um, the speed of the LVAD, therefore creating more uh, higher risk of suction. So this uh, VTAG result after reduction in the device pump speed. Uh, so I just want to uh, add a similar case. This is a courtesy of Dr. Kasi, who is currently in Mayo Clinic doing his her advanced heart failure fellowship, and she's been preaching. Uh, he was a CT over there in Rochester, which is, you know it's very hard to change things over there. But she was she's able. Co to, she's coming back. <laughs> so, so she was able to uh, make some changes. This is a case that she just sent me. Uh, I want to share with you some interesting uh, maneuver. Uh, they did over there. So this is a similar presentation, uh, except for this patient had AVR and ischemic chiromyopathy. What's interesting that she also had, this patient also had palpitation with change of position and, and, and deep inspiration. And he also hears some tapping sound become more obvious when he, she's doing straining uh, balsaver maneuver in left lateral position. So you can see the CT over there. Unfortunately, I don't have the dynamic images. So similar finding, but not so dramatic like ours. So I suspect this probably was obtained during a part of the respiration uh, in which uh, the suction event wasn't that clear. I think this is quite uh, interesting here. So what they did is they performed a maneuver. Uh, I hope, can, can we click this video on the left side, please? Click the video on the left. Yeah. Turn the sound off. Yeah. Go me. back. Click, uh, yeah, click on that. Yeah, yeah. So this is the Umbalsava maneuver. You can see that. So she, she was very smart. Dr. Kasi went over there, moved the patient to the echo lab, and have the patient perform Balsava. So during release of Balsava strain, you can see clearly suction of the, the myocardium into the info cannula. Mm. And this is with position change. So basically reproducing, proving that the patient wasn't crazy. Uh, it's real what he was feeling and, and, and basically documenting uh, what happened. Uh, so this is just uh, us, what we think, what she think. I think I totally agree with her. During the release phase of the Valsava maneuver, you have increased volume of the right ventricle. Okay, so the septum get pushed to the left side, increasing the chance of suction or doing left lateral positions, uh, again, the info camera can be moved, pushed toward the septum, therefore uh, causing myocardial irritation, VTAC, and his uh, 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 sensation of tapping sounds uh, with all this. So the follow-up is obviously, again, the same. Uh, the, re the, the speed was reduced, the patient did better, so I think for tr troubleshooting of different problems associated with LVAD, clinical assessment with all the differential plus imaging is uh, very uh, useful. Uh, and again, this case shows the suction event also can lead to the rise in uh, LDH and um, hemolysis, not, not only the pump thrombosis. Uh, so again, phys physical exam, um, <coughs> provocation maneuvers could be useful, but imaging with echo, first line, and I think CT in uh, our center, we're doing quite a few. We, uh, it's very useful for optimizing or troubleshooting complication. Um, okay, so I don't know. I just think it was pretty to show you. I don't know exactly what's the clinical value of this 40 CT data set, but. It looks beautiful, though. Yeah, it looks pretty. Yeah, exactly. Uh, th this is not virtual reality. This, this is, is reality. No, I, will, I, I, will, I would like to use VR into, into this data set. That would be, I think, very... That would be very neat. Yeah. Any questions? That's all I have. Any questions? How many of you uh, image or deal with VADs? Not, not a small number. Not a small number. I know Dr. Steinbeck has not been introduced yet, but he's here and he's going to also share some cases. But I just want to introduce him. I know he's, he's there. Ray Steinbeck is the, is the head of the Ecolab at St. Luke's Baylor. Well, thank Ray, it's great to have you. Yeah, th thanks for having me, Dr. Uh, 
Zogby, and I'm glad that I'm not showing a bad case today. <laughs> those were excellent ones. And I, I just had a couple of comments. Um, on these particular cases, you wonder why the device would be put in in the first place with the, with the uh, inflow cannula mouth positioned. And I think there's a, two or three things to think about. This is a HeartMate 2, which is a larger device. It's uh, subdiaphragmatic. And it, uh, you should look for the cannula position in the operating room when it goes in. But you got to remember the pump uh, is put in there with the chest open. So it does happen once the patient's settled down, you close the chest, the cannula position can change. So it's a good idea to relook a cannula position in the operating room after the chest is closed. Do you guys so recommend sure that? Do you guys do that? Do you image we it? We try to do it and sometimes. But it's very hard. It's hard and sometimes <clears throat> the chest is also left open because a lot of these patients will develop temporary RV failure when you get the device in. So they'll leave the chest open and then these came back later. So probably what happened too is there may have been favorable remodeling of the heart so that the heart was like really big and then it got smaller and smaller. And so then you've got less room and the device torqued. So, you know, this, this happens. I mean, I don't think there was any necessarily any technically an error. Fortunately, it's not that frequent. You know, we did about over 120 cases, probably only two Two cases this traumatic. Oh, we don't so see it as not. often, but yeah. I remember with the with the Harmony twos, we've seen more torsion. The newer third generation devices, you know, they kind of pop Absolutely. in a little bit easier. Those were those were nice examples. Thank That's great. You. Any questions? Any other questions before we we move on? You could raise your hand or whatever. This is really a, should be informal, should be interactive if you're, if you're yeah, concerned this, this about too, that. This too, I mean, you're getting obstruction, but it's like super intermittent with this. It's if, if you've got like internal pump thrombosis, it doesn't tend to you know, have spikes like this. This is positional or, you know, it's interesting. In this, these cases, like it probably can cause mechanical ventricular tachycardia. Okay, so. the, the other question to you both is, uh, I don't think we're gonna probably present another VAT case. And looking at the pulse Doppler and the angulation, what can you really tell from that as, as to the flow? What's the normal flow expected by pulse Doppler through the inflow cannula? Well, in this device, it, the inflow cannula is remote from the impeller, and so you can put the sample volume near the inflow area and get a um, fairly good pulse Doppler in many of these patients. And we find that, that of inflow velocity more than 1.5 meters per second in this device is abnormal. Uh, the third generation devices have a lot of inflow artifact and you can't measure it. But, but typically with this kind of thing, you'll see like a spike that may go up to one, two meters, but very transient. But you wanna see a nice phasic uh, systolic augmented continuous flow in these devices. And usually they're you know a meter per second, just like everything in the heart. Yeah. Have, have either of you seen um, thrombus on the uh, aortic side of the aortic valve from malpositioned inflow? I mean, from the aortic cannula, have you seen that? In the aortic cannula, uh, the alpha graft thrombosis uh, is also very rare. We've no, no, I'm, I'm talking on the native leaflets. The native, native, oh, yeah, native yeah, leaflets. Yeah, we see, we've seen about out of 120, maybe uh, close to 10 cases. What's the etiology? Uh, it's interesting. You can see if you do dynamic flow, uh, dynamic imaging, you can see clearly the the stasis. Stagnant you know? flow yeah. stasis. And, yeah. Uh, do you do, you, do you guys pass. understand that? Meaning, if I've the got valve some great doesn't pictures open, of that. you, you a have great, a case. I got a great two great cases of that. Yeah, we That's see great. it so. not as much because they're, we're much more aggressive with anticoagulation. But the outflow graft is usually a few centimeters from there to come, and so you wind up with the outflow into more distal ascending aorta and just- So you just stagnant, have stagnant flow. Stagnant flow, so, and so these cases, it happens if the aortic valve's not opening. Correct, so yeah, now, we, you do, now you do intermittent opening, you do the flow, so you intermittently open the valve, is that correct? Yeah, that, and by the way, so if you see a thrombus, especially if you think it might be new in the aortic root, then you don't wanna do some, you, if you identify that, you don't wanna do an optimization study to open the aortic valve so that as a sonographer, you want to kind of look for that and say, hey, there's a thrombus here, so don't turn down the pump speed because, you know, they could embolize. That's a theoretical uh, cons uh, complication. So one more comment is we have done some computational flow modeling of those patients with aortic root thrombosis, and they seem to have some uh, insertion pattern of the alpha graph. So it would be nice to collaborate, you know, because this is such an infrequent event. 
to study more uh, uh, systematically what's the best insertion technique of the alpha graph. Yeah.